My name is Anthony Thomas. I represent, along with Mr. Benjamin Crump, the family in this matter. We want to make sure that we get the answers for the family, but we want an arrest right now. There are many questions out there that we have. We all are feeling as if there is some shade or we we're being left in the dark for some reason where these answers haven't been met. And so we want to get to that. But before we get to that, we need an arrest. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Make no mistake about it, we do support our sheriff. But at the same time, we want him to do the job that he has promised that he would do. And we want swift mm -hmm. justice. Mm -hmm. And that comes first with an arrest. Yeah. He needs probable cause. Is that, that's what he's told me. So at that time, at this time, if there are members of the press who would like to ask questions, I will be answering on behalf of the family. Certainly, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, I know you have a million and one questions to ask. But right now, we just want to make sure that we send the message and that we stand in solidarity today. I'm glad our members of the clergy are here today. Amen. To stand in solidarity on behalf of this family, these children who've lost their mother in cold blood. We need answers. We need an arrest. Thank you. We didn't really get a very good thing. We got our city councilman here. You know, what does he say? He's our representative. I'm sorry. We, the gentleman in the front is asking a question. We didn't really get a very complete account from the sheriff of what may have happened. He apparently wants to do more than this. Are you able to give an account of what happened on the Friday evening? According to the information that we've been located, I'm sorry, they, they didn't hear you. So the, the question was, the question is whether or not we can give an account of what has happened. Um, like was said earlier today, this, this horrible, unjustified killing was done in front of the children. The children are the witnesses. These, these children um, have been through a lot. And certainly, we don't want to put any pressure on the children because we want them to have the opportunity to grieve and also explain what has happened to their mother. Those stories are in development. And we have found out so far that there was an iPad. I'm sure you heard that from Sheriff Woods today. Whereas it belonged to one of the children. And there was a situation between Susan and the children. One of the children were hit with a pair of skates. I'm sure Sheriff Woods explained that today as well. You heard that today. And of course, AJ, Ms. Owens, went to see why. She knocked on the door, according to the information I've been given, once. When there was no answer, she simply replied, I know you hear me. There was no altercation. At the time that was said, the shot rang, killing Miss Owens in front of her children. That's the, all the story that I have it this far until we get more developments. I'm only taking questions from members of the press at this time. Do you believe that? As a man for justice and that step one would be an arrest, what does complete justice look like to you? A conviction. Well, complete justice is, first of all, Sheriff Woods taking care of his responsibilities and doing his due diligence. He makes an arrest, comes first. And after that arrest, he, want, he needs to do a complete and thorough investigation. The state attorney also has equal duty and obligations thank you when it comes to defining what justice means and so once we get the information over to the state attorney it's the state attorney's job to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law and so once we are able to get the prosecution and everything that comes before that we want a conviction because this cannot go away these children these children are never going to forget what has happened to their mother. What are we as a community going to do about that? The worst has already happened to them. As the family's attorney, do you believe probable cause has already been established? I do. But that's not my job to determine. That is Sheriff Woods' job. You need to get up on. That's why 
why we got you here because we tired of this. Not the first time. Don't tell and that's why we're meeting here today to make sure that we have the community support to make sure that not only me as their attorney, but also the entire community is demanding justice. This is this is Sheriff Woods' county. We are members of this county. We all need to come together in solidarity to let him know. Call him. Tell him what you feel. He's a public official. He can hear you. He may not want to. But he has taken on this job, and so he has to answer those hard questions. And that's how we feel. My daughter, my grandchildren's mother, was shot and killed with her nine-year-old son standing next to her. She had no weapon. She posed no imminent threat to anyone. When it says, when we say it takes a village, it was a village that raised my baby girl and I am grateful to each and every one. It is now going to take a village for these children. What I'm asking is for justice. Justice for my daughter, Ajika Chantrell Owens. I am asking for justice for Isaac Williams. Justice for Israel Owens. Justice for Africa Owens. Justice for Titus Owens. Yes. Justice for your family, for your children, for your loved ones. Yes. Justice for America. Yes. To God be the glory. I know justice will prevail. Yes. This is not over. My Father in heaven will see to it that these children, our family, our community, will receive justice and provide for this family, our family, your family. Thank you. When you met Adrika, her smile would light up the room. Adrika adored her children. She lived, eat, and breathed for them day in and day out. She made the sacrifices as a single mom to be there for them in each and every stages of their lives. She would never want to miss a football game, a practice, cheerleading. She was there. They were her world. They were her everything. And now because of the senseless act, they are now without her. Let it be known, I happen to live in the same apartment as Ajika a year before, I, I, I mean, I moved out of that apartment and she moved in a year later. My own children played in the same field as the children who played in the, in the field now. Never was an issue, never was a problem. The landowner or the property overseer told the kids that they were able to play there as long as they cleaned up after themselves. This woman had no right as a tenant to tell these children that they could not be children and play. I truly wish that we were here for different circumstances, but what we're here for is a sign of the time and the sign of living in Florida. I stand before you today as the president of the Marion County branch of the NAACP. It is time for us to reawake and be responsible and community conscious of not just our own, but our neighbors. The issues that we have on today and what we want to declare or decree is that we demand a full and fair, transparent and swift investigation into the death of this mother. Yeah. Yeah. 
The truth is, we've gotten to the point where black folks are almost living in a day where we're afraid to go outside. We are in a constant state of fear or constantly on guard for everything we do. This is our, our children and adults deserve to live in a world where they do not have to live in fear of their neighbors, of the people that live next door to you. You should not ever have to be afraid that if you go and speak, question, or ask, that you can just be shot through a door. This case is really reminiscent of the April shooting of a 16-year-old Ralph Yarrow who was shot when he accidentally knocked on the wrong door. It is a tragic reminder of the fact that it is simply not safe to be black in America. We live in a state where our truth is uncomfortable for others, so now we're not allowed to share our truth. The NAACP stands with this family and we call for an immediate, fair, and impartial investigation into this incident. We also seek accountability and justice. And the same ferociousness that is used when it's one of us, we like to see it right now. time to share. We support the sheriff in doing what's right. We just request that he do it right now. Our state is creating a situation where guns are everywhere. A few weeks ago I reported in our membership meeting that it's going to be like the wild, wild west in Florida. And they're going to kill us right and left unless something is done about this situation. Now this young lady that was killed last week, absolutely no reason for that kind of murder. Unjustified. And listen, we stand here on Tuesday afternoon, and no one has been arrested. Right, okay. Everyone knows who did this. And as we stand demanding justice in our community, we need to know why the sheriff and the officers of the Marion County Sheriff Department have not arrested. We understand that there's a legal process, et cetera, et cetera. A few weeks ago, when the black children killed the white children, they were marching us up before the camera like runaway slaves. And here they know she didn't even run away. And she needs to be arrested today. She needs to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And as a community, we demand that kind of accountability. O'Connor, Marion County, stand up for justice and for what is right in our community. Listen. What this lady did is a very bad thing. She killed this young woman by shooting her through a door. If this isn't stopped, you're going to be walking down the street and they're going to shoot you through the window.
once again, here we are dealing with a situation that's truly unnecessary. A situation that should not have happened anywhere in America, but truly not here in Ocala. But we're here because this, these acts are prevalent time and time and time again. They're prevalent because now we have laws that people can hide behind and use to veil their uh, actions and make them seem as if they're legal when we know they're illegal. This, this situation is horrible. Because if this situ if I had committed this situation on Friday evening, I'd have already been in jail. If any one of us that's standing here right now had committed these same actions, we'd have already been in jail. Justice would have been swift. And the wheels of justice would have rolled on extremely fast. We are asking. We're asking. This is a life. We're asking. We're asking for justice for these four little children. We need justice for this mother. We believe, and we've heard from the sheriff, that there is a, an investigation going on right now. But we expect this investigation to be thorough, complete, and transparent. Nothing needs to be swept under the rug in this investigation. We need full transparency. And as a community, we need you to pray. We need you to support this family. Encourage them. Because this is difficult for us all. But I, I want to leave with this. The same justice that we would have gotten that they get on the other side of town. We expect the same justice in West Ocala. The same justice that happens on the east side of Pine Street needs to happen on the west side of Pine Street. The same justice, the same justice that they got, those boys got a few weeks ago. We need the same justice this week. Today, tonight, I'm calling for our state's attorney to do the job. I'm calling for our law enforcement officers to do the job and make sure that justice is held for this family and this parent. Good afternoon, may I say that, for manners sake. But nothing good has been taking place on this side of town. We have grown to a place where justice for us, we're almost at a point where we feel like they're not going to do anything. We've almost grown numb to how they treat us. When we get justice, we are almost shocked ourselves because we got it. But I want to say on a spiritual note, Christ came for things like this. When we're not treated right, somebody needs to speak. When we're not done right, someone needs to do something. And I'm glad to see all of us here this afternoon, Amen. which means that we can leave where we are to do something. Amen. And this church should have been full of folk yeah. 
who are tired of being sick and tired. And I want to say this to all of us. Yes, we need the Lord. Yes, we need the leaders. But we sure enough need the Lord. I say we sure enough need the Lord. Because there's some powers that be that are blocking our way sometimes. And we need to learn how to go back to the landmark and get a little higher than what we have to help push us across. We've got to go back. And the churches have got to get involved. Every time there was a great movement, the church was involved. Every time justice was done, the church was involved. We have to wake the sleeping giant and get the churches involved and let us come together because yes, we have faith, but faith without work is dead. Amen. May God bless and may God keep us all.